Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for today's webinar. We're going to be talking about, on, about how to build and segment your email list using interactive content. Um, I hope you're all excited, just as excited as I am for this topic, because interactive content is definitely something I want to try more in the future. And email list segmentation is definitely a topic I want to focus more on in our, in our uh, communication campaigns. But I know most importantly, I want to ed educate and I want to you know, propose this idea for you to use segmentation a bit more in the future as well. So I hope you can hear me well. I uh, hope you're all nicely seated, enjoying our voices that you're going to hear in a, in a second. Uh, please let us know if you can hear us well. Uh, you can hear me well on the chat and tell us where you're joining us from, because uh, uh, I know we have some nice international audience over here. Um, so before we before we start, let me just say, uh, hey, Hans, I can see you're from Austria. That's pretty cool. We've got Elsa from Norway. Thanks. Uh, myself, I'm joining you from Poland. We have Agnelli, uh, who I want to introduce you to. Uh, she's joining us from India. Um, so quickly on our side, so like our hosts or your hosts today, uh, my name is Michael and I'm head of content marketing and partnerships at GetResponse. You might have seen me in one of the previous webinars and I'm super happy to see you here. But super importantly, we have Agnelli uh, from Outgrow uh, finally joining us because I know we've been talking about this webinar for quite a while. Anjali, can you tell us a bit more about yourself? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on how to build and segment your email list with interactive content. Thank you for taking our time and being here today. I am Anjali Seherawat, and I head marketing for Outcrew, which is a no-code interactive content creation platform for acquiring qualified leads. I have experience of nearly a decade in content creation strategy and B2B lead generation. So I'm really excited to talk to you more on this topic. Perfect. Thank you so much. And by the way, you never, you never interrupted me before. So sorry for mispronouncing your name. <laughs> before. <laughs> uh, apologize for that. And thanks everyone for joining us. I can see people from Greece, from Germany, from Liberia from Buffalo, New York, Connecticut. So awesome to see you all from around the world, really. Um, asking a quick question on the captions. I'm afraid we don't have the feature to add captions. So I'm sorry, Tim, uh, we will not be able to provide you with that. However, we'll be sending out the recording to you shortly after this webinar. So you can watch it, you can listen to it later on. And we should be able to upload it to YouTube as well. So where you're gonna see the auto-generated captions there. Um, moving on a bit, uh, though, the plan for today uh, is that we're going to have a one hour long presentation, one hour long session, really, uh, where we're going to talk to you about list growth, uh, segmentation, and most importantly, using interactive content to qualify your leads to attract uh, new uh, leads using engaging tactics and also tactics that can help you get access to uh, first party data that you can use to uh, personalized and tailored communication in the future. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, everything is recorded. So you're going to receive the recording uh, via email uh, later this week. Um, you can ask us questions throughout the whole presentation. Feel free to do so. Use the chat pod uh, at the bottom right of the screen. And before we go to the main part of the presentation, I have a short survey, short, quick question I want to ask you. Actually, two questions, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, I'm going to show you the survey just now. So two questions. Um, are you currently using interactive content? That's a simple yes, no uh, question. And if you're already using interactive content, um, super interested in what kind of interactive content you're using already. And if not, well, that's even greater because you're going to some, learn some new ways how to um, build your list and qualify your leads. I can see one person, I think, said that they're using uh, interactive content. So I'm inviting you to share what kind of stuff you're using um, on the chat. Let's wait a few seconds to collect the answers. And there's a second question you probably, uh, um, you can see the second question after you reply to the first one, which is the, are you currently segmenting your list? And I'm asking uh, how deeply are you segmenting your list? How many segments you've got? Uh, I can see Christy uses animated GIFs. So um, I think our definition of interactive content will be slightly different, but I'm going to leave it to Anjali to, to mention this a bit later. 
Uh, let me see how many people we've got. We've got almost 50% folks of the, of the responses. So please uh, help us out, provide more answers. And I'm interested to see what else. Uh, I see two people also responded as, uh, as yes. So they're using interactive content, podcast course content. And hey, hey, Kim from Iowa. All right, folks, I'm going to end the voting now. Um, you can see the results now on the screen as well. Uh, so you can see who you're joining us uh, or who you're joining today. Almost 70% people voted. So that's awesome. Thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, so I'm stopping the, uh, the, the voting, the polls, and I'm going to pass on the microphone to Anjali, who's going to deal with the, the first challenge. What is interactive content? But most importantly, what other things you can do and how you can build your list with interactive content and qualify your leads. So I'm turning off my microphone. I'm going to be in the chat pod available to you throughout the presentation. So off to you. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. Uh, so we are going to start with the basics covering what interactive content is and why you need to include uh, it in your marketing strategy to yield successful results. We live in a world where user generated content is the most consumed content across geographies. So which signifies that the average consumer today doesn't just want to be at the receiving end of content. Instead, they want to be a part of it. This is exactly what interactive content is, where users are actively encouraged to participate rather than just consume. Most of us must have participated in some form of interactive content in our day to day lives, which could be uh, which could be taking part in uh, online chat to ask the status of your order or could be something complex like taking an assessment to find out which diet is best for your body type and uh, and also definitely if you are using netflix you must have seen some quizzes which takes you to which show do you want to see next so talking about some data points uh, I'm amazed by the fact that every day around 2.5 quintillion bytes of data is created. Actually, trillion is as far as my mathematical vocabulary knowledge is, but wow, that's a huge amount. And uh, in 2022, uh, nearly 333 billion emails were sent in a day. So with so much information bombarding you every day, how do you make sure that your content strategy stands out? This is one of the many reasons why creating interactive content experiences that, that gives audiences something to do, say, and see is critical. Moving on to some of the most popular types of interactive content. So we have quizzes, calculators, polls, chatbots, infographics, assessments, and giveaways, which are some of the popular interactive content types. And my personal favorite is quizzes, where, where I can actually find out which popular friends character I am or which show to watch next on Netflix. OK, yeah, big, big. I like movies. Uh, you can feel free to share which one is your interact, which one is your favorite content type. If you are if you have uh, if you have interacted with some of these content types in your social media, probably you can share some of your experiences. quizzes for sure. <laughs> so now let's talk about how interactive content differs from the tradition. Hans has said infographics, polls, yes, definitely, and calculators. Rochelle has said polls. Yep, me too. So moving on to uh, how interactive content differs from traditional form of content. Traditional form includes uh, brochures, blogs, and flyers, which you must have used sometime in your marketing journey. Uh, well, interactive content is permission-based, which means that we get to we get to ask we get to ask people to come to you for information rather than just being in their face and interrupting them where they are. It is interactive content is cost effective. It has a lead ease of lead generation and lead segmentation. At the same time, it's more engaging and leads to increased brand awareness and customer loyalty. Whereas traditional content types are higher on the con uh, cost side and also difficult when it comes to tracking the performance of your campaigns. 
So while interactive content pieces are often worth considering just for the wow factor alone, they also serve meaningful business purposes. An additional and even more valuable payoff is that interactive content generates first party audience data. People who access and customize an interactive experience typically must share their personal information. Thus, you gain direct insights to their interests, preferences, and behaviors, and learn more about their personal identification points, which was never possible with the passive content techniques, and it gives you the edge to create something which your user is looking for. Moving on to why you need interactive content. So to summarize uh, and to add some facts here, 62% uh, of marketers or B2B marketers already feel that uh, they are using interactive content and they feel that interactive content has more value. Uh, it is the best way to get qualified leads and capture data for insightful analytics. And also you can use this information to categorize them into specific segments, which includes territory, industry, budget, outcome, and etc. Helps you drive engagement, increase your increase the time your target audience spends on your website by going through all these fantastic content types that you have added on your website or probably on your social media. So uh, also, it helps you get real-time feedback from your customer. And because it's more personal, it helps you increase your social share rates and get more traffic, referral traffic to your website. Now, let's go through some examples and some use cases of some of, uh, some of the most popular interactive content types. And we are going to start with Sephora. And we are going to start with the Makeup Founder Finder Quiz by Sephora. So Sephora has been using interactive content for a while now in the form of product recommendation quizzes and outcome-based assessments, which has helped them tremendously to gather first-party data and use that data to create better products for their users. I'm sure you must have some of, or some of you must have used some makeup founder quiz, foundation founder quiz in your uh, online shopping experiences. So that all is a type of interactive content. Moving to calculators. So here for calculators, so calculators is a simple and solid way to add value to your website. Rather than browsing through white pages or scrolling through blog posts, calculator mix things up. It makes your audience take more interest in the concept you're trying to sell rather than just selling, sending them uh, some white papers to read through. You are giving them a, a calculate a content piece where they can add their details and they are getting personalized results or they are actually getting to know what value you are bringing for them. So here I, I have added an example of HubSpot, which is basically a leading CRM platform and how they have these calculators on their website, which helps you calculate the return on investment that you could experience with HubSpot products. And next one is assessments. So uh, I, I actually have, uh, this one is really interesting and I participated in this assessment a while ago. This is by Adobe. Adobe create produced creative types. It's an interactive assessment to help designers and artists discover their creative personalities. The effort actually doubles up as a clever way to demonstrate how creators can use Adobe's design tools to express their own style and skill set. Then polls, which has been a, a personal favorite uh, and also a favorite from some of the some of the uh, attendees. So uh, yes, so polls are actually a really big trend on social media, and uh, they encourage engagement in a non-pushy way. So you must have seen a lot of uh, polls in your social media in probably your Instagram or your, on your Facebook. I've added some examples by some brands like Walmart, Samsung, Subway, and 9gag, who have included polls as an inherent part of their content marketing strategy to increase real-time engagement with their users. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask.
Okay, great. So moving on, how Outgrow helps you build amazing and easy to configure, configure interactive content types. Uh, this is actually the Outgrow Builder dashboard is where all the action begins. So once you try out the free trial or probably once you have the subscription, you are going to get the access to their dashboard, which will give you uh, access to create all these interactive content pieces in the in the format of calculators, quizzes uh, and more chatbots and more. So uh, the the builder is uh, the builder is made on the fact that it is what you see is what you get. So basically, you you can see the end user experience in real time while building your content. And since Outgrow Builder comes with ready to use layouts and templates, so you don't have to worry about design or coding. You can just pick a layout which is more suitable to your content type and get started. You can either build from scratch or you can select from Outgrow's repository of hundreds of beautifully designed templates that can be customized according to your brand's need. And the builder is basically divided into three parts, which is build, configure, and analyze. So when you are building, you are actually creating, you're setting up your, your content piece, interactive content piece, where you're adding the questions, you're adding the logic. For if, if it's an outcome-based quiz, you're adding the outcomes. If it's a calculator, you are adding the you're adding the logic and algorithm, et cetera. And then you, uh, you, can, you have a wide option, a wide area of options where you can customize the result. Uh, and then comes configure part. So what, what this tab does is this tab offers you all the basic settings for your content piece, like, like changing the name, email notification settings for users and to self, SEO edition, save result as a PDF and more. Then, then, and also your uh, your your integrations, and uh, so so uh, the analyzed dashboard helps you track progress of your campaigns by giving you a detailed view of the number of leads you have generated with the graphical representation of the audience demographics, and uh, and and the integrations. This one is quite important. The Outgrow Builder has over. The Outgrow Builder has over 1,000 plus integrations to easily transfer your data to any, any other uh, sales and marketing platform, uh, any other platform of your choice. And moving on to the start of the show, uh, the Outgrow Get Response integration, which allows you to acquire, qualify, and segment leads by creating beautiful interactive content pieces with Outgrow Builder and push the leads that you have collected to your get response account with this native integration. Over to Michael. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And let me just say that I know we've looked at some of the big brands out there, but I want you to understand that also smaller and medium companies can definitely use interactive content as well. And, you know, I, I, I did take part in the poll at the beginning, you know, was the ty uh, type of interactive content I liked the most. And well, we used poll today during this, uh, during this webinar. So I was a bit biased, but I did say quizzes, right? But uh, honestly, if you go to e-commerce websites, you, you will see assessment centers, uh, assessments uh, or quizzes there as well. For example, recently I had my birthday two weeks ago and I did take part in an, in an interactive quiz on the website that guaranteed me uh, the discount code uh, of 10 or 15 percent based on my answers. And you have bigger brands as well, SaaS companies. I remember we had a partner that did a really cool a uh, really cool assessment on or quiz on uh, how well you know Instagram and there were, they were a tool for Instagram uh, management. So you, there are many ways you can use that. I know coaches use that, for example, to identify what kind of people they interact with and how they can better personalize that content for them in the future, which takes me really to the next topic, which is um, how to segment your audience and tell your communication. So what happens once you have that data that you collect via interactive content with Outgrow and other ways you can uh, collect your data? So I'm gonna take you a step back for a moment. So why are we doing this? And let's not only think about the ROI and the fact that it's gonna help you better, um, better target your audience, but um, here's a recent report that McKinsey uh, created. Um, they analyzed the 
the perspective or the opinion of the public around personalization. And it turns out that actually people do want personalization. 75 or 71% of people expect personalization in the way they interact with websites, with stores, with everything they do online. And 76% get annoyed when they don't experience it. Um, the 75% that you can see at the beginning on the slide actually says that within the last, uh, within the pandemic or within last year, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, how many percent of people tried something new in their shopping experience, whether it was a payment method or a new brand or a new store. So people are not all that loyal when it comes to shopping online. They will try new things. So if they see something nicer, more engaging, like interactive content that can lead to personalized communication, they will definitely do it. And, you know, I'm a big fan of Netflix myself, watching movies that are recommended to me or reading books that I see recommended to me uh, on Goodreads. Uh, another reason why you want to use uh, personalization and um, content that helps you uh, achieve that is that you can actually improve your sales processes. You, when you do uh, provide people with personalized communication, personalized experiences, they are more likely to recommend you to their, uh, to their friends, to their family, because they are really happy with the brand. They also are more likely to purchase from you again and or purchase you in the first place and repurchase from you in the future. So uh, feel free to check out that report. I'm going to share the link with you later on as well. But personalization and segmentation are key. So now, how, how can you segment your audience? Well, first of all, you need to identify what kind of data you have. You have demographic data, for example, you know, age, income, gender, education level. You have firmographic data. So the same thing as demographic, but for companies, you know, the company size, the scale, the funding, uh, budgets, etc. You can have geolocation. You can have psychographics. So whether, for example, people who share similar beliefs, they follow the same, I don't know, the same brand or the same causes. You can look at the behavior or you can analyze, so for example, your e-commerce uh, customers using RFM analysis, which stands for recency, uh, frequency monetary. So there are many ways to segment your audience. Now to capture that data, we've talked about using uh, interactive content. So collecting that data upon sign up. Okay, you can use just regular forms and pop-ups to collect that data, but you don't want to really ask too many questions right at the beginning because people will not convert. If we asked you like 10 questions for this webinar to, to just get you signed up today, you probably wouldn't sign up. You wouldn't be hearing us today. Uh, you can use polls and surveys. That's definitely recommended. I do like to do these things uh, myself. And it helps you at the beginning of the communication, but it also can help you uh, just get more data or up-to-date data as you keep communicating with your audience. So, for example, you could send um, now on to the third step. You could send a welcome email. For example, and either just analyze what people click in that email, or you could actually provide people with an additional discount, additional incentive to just fill out a poll, fill out a survey. So again, coming back to the e-commerce example, I signed up for a newsletter of a brand that I follow. They sell fun, funky socks. You know, they gave me 5% discount on my uh, next purchase. But in the welcome email, they bumped it up. They said, hey, you want to increase that to 10%? Just fill out this uh, quick poll and tell us what's your date of birthday, what's your preferred style, or what's something that you can uh, or that you like. Um, for example, I don't know, like what causes you support. So you can use that as well. Um, you can just send regular everyday communication and look at what people are clicking within your communication, what pages they're visiting. Uh, so based on their website behavior, you can tag them inside uh, tools like GetResponse. Uh, you can use webinars like today. We just you know, noticed that you like the topic of list building, segmentation, interactive content, and you've participated in a poll. Look how much information we've got about you today that we could use to personalize the communication. And heads up, you know, you're going to receive an email with the recording of today's webinar. So that's personalized content for you as well. And uh, last uh, are data enrichment tools. I don't personally use them uh, too much, but I know like in B2B communications, quite often companies do use that. So for example, when they have a list of contacts or prospects within their database, they do connect it with companies like Clearbit and they check in their databases what information they have about those people. So for example, if they look up my email, they probably will find out from LinkedIn, from other sources that I work for GetResponse, they do many things and I've attended some sort of events. So they will gather that information provide you for b2b that's important but um, you know what the question is whether you can use that information to tailor your communication if you can effectively that's great 
Uh, so on to the next step, I showed you, uh, I mentioned that you can use everyday communication. So here are examples from e-commerce brands, they do it. So in Uncommon Goods and H&M, for example, you can see that in every single email, the, the CTA buttons, the links, actually look kind of like labels. That could be a coincidence, but it could be just the fact that they are tracking who clicks on those things so that they can target people accordingly, so they can segment people accordingly later. <clears throat> uh, quick question about postcards. Actually, it depends on your lo location. That's a that's a tricky one. So, for example, in Europe and under GDPR, I don't think postcards are all that great. Um, they can be used. I know Zalando, for example, uses them. Big brands use them. All local services, hairdresser, car mechanic, or someone else, they could use postcards. But if you want to do a big scale campaign using postcards, I know it works really well. In, in the US. So actually I listened to a recent episode of the podcast from Practical E-Commerce, so you can check it out as well. And there was a gentleman from Postpilot, they said about using uh, postcards for uh, actually reactivating your subscribers. So for example, if you, if you have a list of subscribers that opted out from your email list or they uh, just don't open your emails, you can upload that list to Post uh, Postpilot and you can send them postcards to reactivate them. Or you can actually use the data, for example, your email list to check up the locations of these people, so geolocation, and you can base segmentation within that tool, um, um, you know, or connect those two dots together and just use segmentation to only target people within a specific zip. -up. So definitely depending on your location, depending on your business, but I would not, you know, I would not just say no at this moment, because I know it does work in many, in many areas. Um, so apart from, you know, everyday communication, uh, what's important is to understand what kinds of segments you can create. So we know what kind of data we have, how to connect it or how to collect it. Now, what kind of segments you can create and some examples of the examples of segmentation that are popular in the direct -to consumer e-commerce include, for example, subscribers who never bought anything from you. Uh, we can have many people who are one-time buyers and they never came back to us to do anything else. You do want to turn them into repeat buyers. You can have recent customers or uh, VIP clients or brand ambassadors. Uh, you can have customers who just buy from one single category. So there are many ways you can um, direct or target your communi uh, communication, target your audience. Uh, here's an example of a company that actually did uh, segmentation, very simple segmentation, uh, sending emails to uh, people that are interested in uh, um, products for women, products for men, simple thing, you know, just changing the colors and um, I would say products within your email, but that generated above average uh, engagement rates, opens and clicks. And I'm not saying that, you know, this, this idea is super, uh, I would say, outstanding. It's something that everyone can do, especially in their e-commerce. You don't need a lot of data to, to do that. And if it's going to generate great results, do it. Why not? Just use even a simple segmentation tactic like this one. For B2B, uh, so for example, you can target people, for example, if they have a company domain in their email address or they're using a Gmail address. Uh, we do that quite often in our post, uh, post webinar communication to see, for example, who attended our webinar. Uh, you can see, you can check who matches your ICP, your, internet, uh, your ideal customer profile. You can, um, you can target people who are prospects. Uh, you know, they engaged with your communication, but they didn't convert, they didn't book a demo or people who booked a demo but never converted. So you can always go back to these slides later on, uh, but just understand that there are many ways you can segment your audience. And uh, I do hope that next time we do a webinar segmentation, we're gonna see a much bigger uh, share of the audience that does segment their audience heavily. Uh, so segmentation in practice, that's something I wanna actually lead to now. Um, so if you use uh, tools uh, for, I don't know, collecting subscribers, you use pop-ups, forms, or you use interactive content from Outgrow, all of that data goes into your CRM or your email service provider like GetResponse. This is what it looks like in GetResponse. This is a contact info card where you can see, for example, on the right, um, sorry for the tiny image, but you can see on the right that people uh, subscribed. You can see if they open an email, if they clicked on the link, which link, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. On the left, on the other side, you can see all sorts of information like when they signed up, what IP they had, what con, for example, which content piece they downloaded, 
and the tags. The tags at the bottom are super important because that's what, for example, we get from Outgrow when you connect it with get response, you create a poll uh, that checks what type of friends character you are. It's going to tell you like Michal is Chandler, Chandler Bing. So definitely that's going to go directly into get response and you can send them email communication with an image of Chandler uh, or just, you know, his brilliant jokes that he was always sharing uh, in the shell. Um, so that's, you're going to find it there. So how can you take it into practice, into segmentation? So I have three levels of sophistication I call it. And don't be, don't feel intimidated if you're not there in, on any of those levels. I, I think uh, all of us can reach all of those. It depends really on the need. Sometimes you just don't have a need beyond uh, level one. So the first level is you just provide the conditions and save this, let's say, filter as a segment. So for example, what you can see on the screen this is from our account inside Get Response. I asked our system to show us all the people subscribed to Get Response resources list that were subscribed within the 30 days, last 30 days, and their uh, method of subscription was API. API is usually reserved for integration. So I could see everyone inside Get Response that was subscribed uh, via, let's say, uh, our connection here with Outro. And as soon as I save that, I can send email communication to them separately either in just regular email uh, newsletters, or I could segment that for any other communication I'm doing to send them a poll, to send them a webinar recording, anything else, you know, to just to segment that. And that's level one, set it and kind of forget it because you created that segment and you, you can even use it once or twice depending on your needs. Uh, if it's, you know, you could, in, in any commerce, you could use it, for example, for males and females or uh, B2B brands or B2C, etc. The level two of uh, sophistication that I recommend is adding the, the first level uh, and information that you got and marketing automation together. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, using marketing automation, you can actually tag people based on the stages they um, they achieved, they scored, or they got into, or based on their behavior. So, for example, the the way I use it inside of our campaigns, I have a lead nurturing sequence uh, for resources leads. If someone goes through six emails that we send them, we tag them accordingly. Tag um, lead nurtured or resources lead nurtured, and that goes into a segment where I can see like show me how many people in the last thirty days have become a nurtured lead. Or I, I can look, at, for example, if I had a separate sequence for people that entered a webinar on list growth, show me how many people we have on the list growth uh, you know, segment. That's level two. Again, you have to set it up in using marketing automation and segments together. But you just add that information for your own uh, personal use later on to target your communication better. The level three is the most sophisticated one is when you actually combine those things and respond and react immediately. So for example, here you can see a uh, marketing automation workflow that not only filters your communication and filters, or not only filters your contacts, segments them, but also responds to them uh, right away. So here you can see that someone subscribed to the list and we check they're an e-commerce customer wait for some time for let's say one day and keep repeating the loop wait for one day and check if they spent over 50 bucks if they spent over 50 bucks send them a, an email with a coupon code or you know just a thank you message then check again if they spent over 100 bucks and keep checking keep checking if they spent more if they did then send them another message or add them scoring points do whatever you want you can uh, add that and then send them a dedicated communication, tailored communication, uh, depending on how much they spend. And there are many ways to do it. So, uh, you know, you can see that this is in an e-commerce case, uh, but there are many ways you can use it in other companies. So to give you more examples, for example, uh, I've got three, uh, three cases here from our customers. So one, for example, is the TechSoup, uh, TechSoup Polska from Poland, who are a huge NGO organization, they work globally, uh, but they did a campaign with us. So where they increased year over year um, their, um, their orders value just by using segmentation and email communication, uh, they increases by 1200. And what they do is basically check what needs people have when they sign up to their, uh, to their association. 
uh, for example, what sort of software they need, what sort of hardware they need, and they can later on send them emails with dedicated information on the trainings that they do or deals for software and hardware that they have. And it, it's as simple as that. You don't need to automate anything there. You just collect that information at the beginning. And then when you create your newsletters, you just send them tailored to the needs of those folks. Another way to use this, uh, here's from events, or, um, events industry. Uh, so business boxing is a, actually, it's an interesting one. Uh, they do events where uh, white collar folks can box and they collect money for charities. So they organize huge events where people actually fight in a boxing ring according to rules. But uh, what's interesting is that they use automation. <coughs> Sorry. They use automation to collect more attendees uh, to join them for live events. So what they do is they check which city people are in. And based on that, they just send a dedicated email or SMS, uh, depending on what, what data people provided. And then and they manage to get 20% higher attendance rate just using these two things together. <coughs> Apologies. And the last one. <coughs> Sorry. And the last one, we've got a marketing agency, Monday Comms, uh, who work directly with tech Dell Technologies to increase the adoption rate of their products, of their services, of their tools, um, and um, several countries, if I'm not mistaken. So what they do is actually use marketing automation and segmentation to see which people interact with their content, which people attend their webinars, and which people are interested in particular technologies, particular solutions, so that they can prepare that information for their sales folks later on to follow up with more uh, detailed, more tailored follow-up message. So that you know that the sales pitch that you get isn't just like, hey, I saw you checked out, get response. It is, you know, in their case, it's gonna be like, hey, I saw that you're interested in these types of products uh, and Dell technologies. Um, how about we set up a you know a, a discovery call? How how about we set up a demo call where we're gonna just talk about the solutions that we can provide you with, and that saves money, that brings additional revenue, and actually uh, just makes life much more easier because you don't have to uh, do it everything to get uh, yourself manually. And folks, that's it from my side. I want to uh, make sure that we focus on one more thing. And that is the deal that we have for you today, both from Get Response and from Outgrow. Uh, so uh, for those of you who haven't signed up for, for any of the tools just yet, uh, feel free to use the code that you have here for the Get Response. You have 15% off for your first uh, year for on all plans. And on Outgrow, you have 20% off for your annual plan and two week free trial. And for the first one for Get Response, just visit the website that you can see it there. And uh, for Outgrow, Actually, for both of them, we're going to send you that information over email with the recording later on as well. So don't worry, you will not miss out on, on the deal. You'll receive it uh, from us shortly. Now, the last part, I did say that, you know, we're going to share the deal and we also have a have some time for a Q&A session. So, folks, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, we would be happy to answer them for you uh, and, yeah, just provide as much uh, feedback will provide as much help as as we can. And where not everything is recorded, so uh, we will be sharing with you later the recording along with the deals uh, sent to you via email. Um, let me see. So I can see someone typing. So I have the, you know, anxiety there already <laughs> waiting for the question. Uh, but but I appreciate everyone that you know joined us today. Uh, it, okay, I see one question. Okay, so let me just. Hold on. an example of how to tag to an email. So um, there are multiple ways you can tag your email address inside Gear Response. So you can either do it manually, just go into contact information and tag someone uh, by, by hand. So in their contact card, you can just add a tag. For example, if you had a conversation with someone direct one-to-one, -one, uh, your consultant, your coach, or your real estate agent, you can just do that. And if you have a marketing automation workflow set up to 
start when a tag is assigned, that will automatically move them to a particular flow. You can use that, uh, you can tag people just for example in outgrow. When you go to the configuration settings, uh, you choose to segment or pass segment data. And for each question, you will have to map um, you know, each answer with a tag that will be sent to get response. And the third way, uh, you can just tag people in marketing automation workflows. So for example, after sending a welcome email, you can tag someone received a welcome email. And actually, you don't want to add too many tags because uh, you're just going to get lost in the data later on. But uh, I do use, for example, a tag at the beginning of our flow and so I get a response. I check if someone is already a, a, a paying customer. So every time someone signs up to a resources list, I check if they're also on the paid users list. If not, I add them a tag, which is called content leads first. So I, I at least know that the people who convert later on have been acquired by the content team. All right, let me see what questions do you. OK, so we've got one for you. Let's see. Oh, actually, quite a few. OK, let's see. Do you want to tackle this one, Anjali? I use chatbot's talk about how we can use this to segment a list. Segment this into a list. I'm not yes. sure, but I think I can take this one up, wherein uh, Leo is asking, how do you get people interested in your interactive sure. content in the first place? Okay. So basically, uh, whatever content type that you select bases your need and bases how you want to target your people, what information you need from them. You can either get a quiz, you can either get started with a quiz or with a cal outcome-based calculator or with a numeric calculator, depending on the depending on your audience and what information you need, you can start with that. And you can either embed it on your website or on your mailer or on your social media. So wherever your target audiences are, you can reach out to them, uses whatever mode you are using right now, whatever sales and marketing platforms you're using, and you can push that content to your target audience and see the results that they are generating, see the engagement building up. Thanks, thanks. I see that someone got intimidated because they saw a couple of spelling mistakes. Don't worry about it. We all do that, especially you know when typing fast. Uh, so I can go back to the chatbots one, and I can take take that one. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You can create chatbots inside Outgrow, right? Because I haven't used that one just yet. Anjali. So sorry. Uh, you, yeah. You can use you can use you can create chatbots inside Outgrow, right? Yes, yes, definitely. Okay. So we can create chatbots and you have an option to create chatbots, which can go live on your uh, website. And uh, how you can use this to segment your list is whatever questions that you're you, you are mm -hmm. getting, that that data is going to be uploaded and that data is going to be stored for you on the Outgrow Builder. And you can further segment this data on whatever whatever needs is whatever need is arising. For example, most of your user are, are asking for a particular product, or they're asking for a discount, or if they are asking questions, some there are some frequent FAQs, or there is some bug in your website. You can definitely use all that data, segment the list, send it to get response or whatever tool you are using. And then you can uh, you can you can talk about that particular issue. So if it's it's about a product that they want to know more about, you can definitely create an emailer and send it to that particular list. And uh, whatever whatever responses that you are getting from the chatbot, you can use it to segment your list and then target those audiences using those different lists. Perfect. And sorry for putting you on the spot, but uh, for, let's let's think of an example. For example. Let's say you're an SEO agency and someone is checking out your website. You can have a chatbot pop up, let's say after 15 seconds of someone being on the website, asking you, hey, what kind of services are you looking for? And then you have an option. I want content creation services. I want a content strategy discussion. I want to have link building campaigns set up for me. So you can, for example, have those three questions there and based on the answers, on the next screen or the next stage of the of the uh, chatbot could present to you okay thanks for answering here are some common links you can check out here are some top articles on that or 
uh, feel free to provide your email address so we can provide you a quote or some additional content uh, based on your needs. And that, if you can transfer that to your, you know, uh, to get response, for example, you can have different flows set up for these people with dedicated communication, with dedicated examples, or you can just pass it on to your CRM to just have a sales rep reach out to these uh, people to look up, for example, who filled out that chatbot, whether it was a company, it was a, you know, a, just a regular consumer, uh, so you can prepare the best pitch for that. Uh, okay, so let me see that. I think that that's uh, that one is for me, but I'm going to check quickly if there have been uh, a few questions. There's one question about service inside Gear Response. Unfortunately, they do not exist anymore, or they will be uh, sunset soon. So sorry about that. But there are plenty of great tools that offer polls. Outgrow is there. Uh, you can use uh, free tools uh, like. Um, like Google Forms, for example, uh, or just any survey tool out there that you can think of. It either has a native integration inside Gear Response or a Zapier integration that you can just connect uh, inside Gear Response. Uh, I know we use several inside Gear Response, so uh, you, you can think of anything. I think the, the one that has nice native integration as well is called Servicate. And that lets you embed your uh, polls inside the Gear Response email creator. So that one is worth checking out. Um, capturing profile information for email links, for example, to add job function to the custom record if it's missing. Do you custom do your customers do that very often? If so, if so, what's the best method? Um, definitely, we have plenty of customers that target uh, their communication this way, and the best way to do this um, is to create segments. So you go to the search contacts, and there uh, you look for people that receive the email and. Uh, people that clicked a specific link. And then you save that as a segment. And then another, you can have another segment of people that received the email and clicked another link. You can have, let's say, if you have three links within an email, you can have three segments there. And then in, another, in marketing automation workflows, you can actually create communication based on the segments that people got into. So um, after you, let's say, someone subscribes, send them an email, you check, uh, you know, check if there's segment A meaning they clicked on the link A. If not, then check if they're on segment B, which meaning they clicked on the link B, if they clicked on the link C, et cetera. So you can connect those things together. And if you go to in, uh, getresponse.com slash customers, you can see many of case studies that our customers have provided us with, have worked with us on. Uh, so just going to type that one in the chat. Um, you can see some nice work to marketing, marketing automation workflows created uh, together inside Gear Response, uh, so that can help you better understand how, what you can achieve with these things. But definitely, people do that. But let's let's be uh, let's be sure that we need that information. We want to segment those things because sometimes if you create too many tags, uh, you just get lost because you're not documenting stuff or you just never thought about what you're gonna use that data for. But I know B two B especially use that quite often. Let me see if we have any other questions. Folks, feel free to ask how many segments are too many to deal with. Um, that's a that's a tough question to say uh, to you know to to answer. I we recently did a webinar on advanced email list segmentation, and uh, you know the e-commerce world shows us that if you have more than hundred segments then you're going to be among the top companies or actually the other way around. There's a correlation. The top companies with the highest ROI, highest uh, sales, they usually have more than 100 segments. And inside Get Response, we in our teams, we do have a couple of hundred as well. But some of the segments are not used anymore. So a segment could be like folks that attended the webinar three years ago, and we're not using that information. But let's say everyday communication wise, I think we have about 10 to 20 segments that we use. So, you know, paying users, free users, freemium users, content leads, uh, webinar leads, etc. And then you can see uh, based on location, for example, if you were using this. Um, so essentially, re re depending on your needs, how many segments you want to uh, you want to use, uh, I would definitely try to go as granular as you can, provided that you can later on send tailored communication using this data. Because if you don't have the team to support you to send that additional email or an email to only a certain part of the audience, then maybe it doesn't make sense. An example, one of the previous webinars that we've done uh, earlier this year, 
I've divided our list into three segments. People that are registering for all our webinars, people who follow our resources and blog, and then people who engaged with our con e-commerce content in the past. And the webinar on e-commerce content in the past, they, it had the same open rate, 50% open rate, which was very good. But the click-through rate was 3.5% on, on the e-commerce uh, group, and it was 1.5 uh, for the other groups. So you can see that you know we could have just targeted the people with the e-commerce, uh, you know, with e-commerce interest, and we would have gotten like very good results. But at the same time, we had people that haven't previously indicated any e-commerce interest, but yet they still you know clicked on that later on. Um, okay, I have a. I can see one more question. If you are not an e-commerce. Uh, okay, I'm going to tackle, uh, tackle a different one just now. So are segments dynamic? Are they continuously? Yes, they do. So for example, if you have a segment that checks, show me people that signed up in 30 days. So today, if I check this segment, it's going to be different people that if I check them in a month, right? Because it's going to show me in the last 30 days uh, from that moment I'm checking. Mm. If you're in e-commerce, how can you use list segments to build up quality leads? Private school using li our list to market to non-attending families. Um, so yeah, you can definitely you know use polls and you can use interactive content as well to figure out to ask these people why they're not attending, what they need uh, to get more value out of uh, out of your services. Um, you know, I'm a B2B. Uh, marketer and I use segments all the time. People that attended the webinar, that attended the courses, that engaged with the stuff that we were sending, that signed up through a campaign, a particular campaign, or uh, from a particular source. So that's s several examples. Or if you have geolocation data, and you usually do when you collect uh, first-party data using polls and um, and and content and like sign-up forms, you will have their IP location so you can target people by uh, location for example if your uh, if your school private school is targeting people within a specific area if you know that this is a more uh, affluent area then you can send out different communication to them or just see if if they respond to your emails send them a different kind of discount or a different kind of incentive and send people different kind of communication based on um, their lack of uh, lack of interactivity, lack of engagement. So I generally, for example, don't like using too many discounts, uh, especially with things like this. But if you have someone that doesn't respond to any of your communication, you can dedicate a discount to them. And other people that are engaging, but they're not converting, you can use testimonials, uh, social proof, you can use other trust symbols that will just prove that your services, your school is worth, uh, worth you know, uh, attending. Let me see if we have any other questions. And thanks, uh, Anjali, for uh, sending over that link. Folks, check it out. So, so basically, this link will help you get started. Uh, it will have some basic questions like which industry you belong to and what are your marketing goals. Based mm -hmm. on that, this is a free tool which will help you generate some marketing, some content creation ideas uh, for quizzes, like top of the funnel marketing ideas, bottom of the funnel, middle of the funnel. And you can inspire, get inspired from some of those ideas to get started. Awesome. That's very meta. <laughs> That's a nice way of using your own tool for that. Uh, great stuff. All right, folks. I think, I think we've gone through all the questions that we had. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, feel free to ask away the last question. If not, folks, feel free to reach out to us. You're going to receive the recording of this, of this webinar along with the discounts that we have prepared for you. And, you know, it's Black Friday season, so why not take part in, uh, in discounts like this? So you will be able to reach out back to us and follow up with us. And you can always find us on LinkedIn as well if you want to chat with us directly. Um, you know, we're always one email away, one click away on social media. So feel free to reach out. Even if you have a question or suggestion, uh, we'd be happy to receive it. So thank you all for joining us today. Anjali, awesome. Thank you for uh, for joining us today. Finally meeting you. Well, I've met you in person before, but finally seeing you here live to the webinar with us. Uh, 
uh, I think everyone was was enjoying themselves. I was definitely enjoying myself. So once again, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. And have a good rest of your day, everyone. And we'll send you the recording soon. Have a good one. Bye. Thanks.